Hey guys, how are y'all? Um, if you're new to my channel, I provide content to aid students with difficult concepts within all levels of biology, such as genetics and cell and molecular biology. So how my uh, videos on my channel will, wor will work is y'all will start sending me in topics that y'all need help with um, through the comments down below. Um, I'll provide content every week that will either be um, one long video or um, a series of multiple videos uh, with different parts. So like first part will have like the background for y'all to even understand uh, the rest of the processes that I will be explaining. explaining. Um, so for this first video, um, I felt like it was necessary to start out with glycolysis because um, as a biology major, I feel like this is a topic that comes up consistently and it's very important to get the basics in order to understand how it works and why it's important in the body. Um, so I will be um, talking as well as writing, drawing pictures, um, uh, so y'all can understand the concept more. So for this topic, we are going to break it down and talk about what it is, where it occurs, um, how does glucose play a role in it, um, where in the cell or where in the body is this taking place, and then the whole process um, from glucose to pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, TCA cycle, Krebs cycle, whatever you want to call it, and so on. So if y'all feel like this video will benefit y'all, keep on watching. Okay, so to begin with, um, understanding the basic concept of glycolysis, um, we need to understand that we take in glucose um, from the food we eat. So I'm going to come in here real quick and start writing about why glucose is important. Y'all can write along with me just so y'all have the information because I guarantee you this uh, will benefit y'all if y'all are biology majors, uh, so it's good to know. Um, so for glucose, um, it's first of all, it's a sugar. Um, we take it in um, through food intake. Um, Glucose is very uh, important because all our organs and all our cells need it to survive. So cells and organs need to be fueled by it to survive and live. Without it, we'd be going through organ failure, our cells, uh, we'll start to have mutations and die. Um, so glucose is very crucial in our diet and to our body. Um, so that's what glucose is and how we get it. Um, another thing to note about it is how is it stored if we have too much or if we don't need all the glucose that we are um taking in from the food we eat every day. So excess glucose is stored as glycogen, um, particularly in the liver and skeletal muscle. So understanding this um, will allow it to make more sense just because when we explain the process of glycolysis, you will understand that when there is too much glucose in your system, some will be used and some will be stored because in times of need or times of survival or when you're starving, that glycogen storage will um, be of great need. Um, so that is very important. Um, just to note that glycogen itself is many glucose linked together. 
So I'm going to just put this in a different color so you know. Um, so yeah. Another important topic is where does it occur? And this is very important because there is a lot of students that do confuse the TCA cycle from gly glycolysis itself. And although sometimes those two topics are merged, you need to know that the conversion of glucose to pyruvate and then pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, parts of this process occur in different parts in the body or in the cell. So um, in general, um, glycolysis will occur in the cytoplasm. Um, so you'll have basically glucose, um, you're going to have some ATP, um, adenosine triphosphate, which is put into the reaction. Uh, this happens in your body automatically. It's not like an experiment, but you need two ATP to go in in order for glucose to become two pyruvates. So that, from the glucose to the pyruvate, um, that all occurs in the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm is the fluid inside the cell. Um, this fluid consists of water, salt, and protein, which are very um, important for cell life, just in general. Um, so once we get from achieving those two pyruvates, so I'm going to write this down just in case because it may be like hard to um, process if it's not because some of y'all are visual. Um, so I will be drawing out this process, but um, I'm going to draw the, okay. So basically, we have the mitochondria. And what's important about this mitochondria is that it has these folds. And this plays a role in what processes occur where in the um, mitochondria. So For the mitochondria, as I said, we have the cytoplasm, the cytosol on the outside. Um, we have the inner membrane. So this right here would be the inner membrane. That's the inner membrane. This inner membrane is known as the Krebs cycle or TCA cycle. And Basically, those two pyruvates are going to go into the mitochondria and be converted into acetyl-CoA, where the TCA cycle will um, begin or um, initiate at this inner mitochondrial membrane. So that's very important to note because that will um, help you all understand the next topics. Okay. So another very important thing to note is how we get our energy and in what form it comes in. So let me create a text box over here and explain to y'all what phosphorylation is and what hydrolysis is because those are also two very important topics. Okay. So phosphorylation, um, we have a molecule called ADP. And ADP is, or stands for adenosine diphosphate. So this particular um, molecule notes that 
there are only two phosphates because D stands for di, which means two. That's basically, um, if you think about it, ADP is what's partially charged. And when you add to it an inorganic phosphate, this is what you get, ATP, which all of y'all should have heard about. Um, ATP is a charged, or it's fully charged compared to ADP because it has that third phosphate. Um, and this is what the goal is, to make a lot of this because our organs, our body needs a lot of ATP to keep functioning, especially when you go to the uh, when you talk about action potentials, neurons, things like that, um, that's a little difference, but it's energy, and you need energy for everything is what I'm trying to say. Um, so now that y'all understand what ADP and ATP is, the process will be um, a little easier because y'all will see me go between ATP and ADP later on. I believe this concludes our first video. Um, if y'all have any questions on what I should be doing better or like um, any questions about the material that I covered or if y'all want uh, more in-depth backgrounds, um, please comment below. Let me know and I will do everything in my power to make learning easier for y'all because these are tedious um, pieces of information to uh, learn. Um, if you enjoyed this video, um, part two will be coming shortly. Um, I'll get that posted whenever I can, um, explaining the actual process of glycolysis. Um, Make sure you have watched part A so you can watch part